Hello from Spain, I am Eduardo Albeniz. I belong to the endoscopy unit of the Hospital de Navarra, located in Pamplona, Spain. I also belong to Navarra Biomed Research Center, and I have time, time dedicated to research thanks to a grant from Caja Navarra, La Caixa Foundation. I have also the pleasure of coordinating the endoscopy resection group from the Spanish Endoscopy Society, where we are working in EMR, ESD, POEM, and other third space related, related techniques. Recently, our manuscript entitled Clip Closure After Resection of Large Colorectal Lesion with Substantial Risk of Bleeding has been accepted in gastroenterology. And I would like to share with you all of our main results. Well, delayed bleeding is the most common major complication of colorectal EMR, with a mean rate between 2 and 10%. Although clips are increasingly applied after EMR, there is a scar evidence to support this practice. But this year, Heiko Paul and colleagues also published in gastroenterology a nice randomized control trial where click closure reduced significantly post-EMR bleeding. There were no selection of the patients by delayed bleeding risk groups, and the effect appeared to be restricted to large proximal polyps. So our primary aim was to determine the efficacy and safety of the complete clip closure of the mucosal defect after the EMR or large non-perunculated colorectal lesions as prevention of delayed bleeding. As in the paper of Liquat and Professor Rex, we defined complete closure when clips were applied next to each other and there were no substantial submucosal areas in the closure line, as you can see in the image. In the other slide, you can see a control or a failed closure due to the location. You can see a resection in the bulb. We designed a randomized control trial conducted by 11 hospitals, 11 endoscopies for our working group. So thanks again to all the collaborators for the effort done. The inclusion criteria were consecutive adults over 18 years, preferred and scheduled for EMR of only one large colorectal uh, lesion, with at least a substantial risk of bleeding over 8%. For that purpose, we use our delayed bleeding risk score published in CGH 2016. This is the enrollment, 237 patients, 170 in the control group, 120 in the treatment group. The baseline characteristics of the patients were similar with the exception of antiplatelet therapy. We achieved a complete closure of the mucosal defects of 57%, probably due to the large size of our lesions. A partial closure of 28%, and we failed the closure in 15% of the lesions. Lesions with failed closures were larger, with poor accessibility, and the EMR procedure was more difficult and time consuming. We observed 20 delayed bleeding cases, 8.5% of delayed bleeding rate, and it was associated with age and antiplatelet use. In this slide, I want to show you the main result of, the, of our study. In the intention to treat analysis, the delayed bleeding rate in the control group was 12% and 5% in the treatment group with a p-value of 0.053 and an absolute risk difference of 7%. A multivariate analysis adjusting for the confounding variable antiplatelet therapy obtained a p-value of 0.022. The number needed to treat was 14. In the per protocol analysis, the delayed bleeding risk was 12% in controls and only 1.5% in the complete closure group, with an absolute risk difference of 10.6%. The strength of the study were that we included only lesions with at least an estimated median or high delay bleeding risk, using a validated score. We include only EMR technique, reflecting the clinical practice of Western countries. The participation of several hospitals made the results more generalizable to a real-world setting. We include only one poly per patient. And the limitations were that our score was based in an uncontrolled observational study. Complete closure was not possible in 43% of the cases because half of the lesions were over 40 millimeters. And it was decided to use only 11 millimeter clips. So our conclusions, Keep closure of mucosal defect of the EMR of large non-perunculated colorectal lesions with substantial risk of delayed bleeding reduce four times the incidence of delayed bleeding. If we achieve the complete closure, this can be challenging, 
but reduce 14 times the incidence of delayed bleeding. We consider that future trials must be done based on delayed bleeding risk groups. We need a study with a COFS efficacy analysis, and we need also to know better what happened in the left column because of the negative results of the study of Paul and a few cases included in our study in this location. Thank you for your attention. Of course, we are open to any collaborative research and I remain at your disposal. Bye-bye and thanks.